Pizzeria chain finally has their first real animatronic, who then haunts the player for five nights and a nightmare night until the place burns down due to faulty wiring. The end. Take a bow. It's finally over. Well, kinda. We're still left with one final, seemingly impossible question to answer. Who? is the purple guy. After spending, I kid you not, full days plotting out all the details of this game franchise on whiteboards, talking it over with anyone who would stand to listen to me ramble on and on about fictional haunted robots, and just looking at it from every possible angle, all logic points to it being... The phone guy. And no, not because I made a theory about it and refused to let it die. Honestly, I couldn't care less if that last video was wrong. At this point, I just care about the truth, and phone guy makes the most logical sense. I know your complaints, and I promise you, if you stick with me, you'll be convinced. First, there's the circumstantial evidence I presented during my FNAF 2 theory. Phone Guy's admitted love of Foxy being reflected by the smiling purple guy sprite during the Foxy Go 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 minigame. His distrust of the puppet, a creature haunted by his first victim that we see time and time again trying to bring a stop to his killing spree. His admitted role as a security guard and even the weird phone-like object in his hand from the Save Them minigame. But there's even more evidence when we consider Five Nights 3. Consider this, he's the only person in the game who knows about the safe rooms. As we've mentioned before, all the safe rooms were sealed up back in the Springlock suit days, back in the first Freddy Fazbear's Pizza location, meaning every other employee coming afterward would have never even heard of these things. Phone Guy is the only character we meet who would have any knowledge of these rooms, and more importantly, of how they operate, how they're invisible to the cameras, and more importantly, importantly, to the animatronics. And that's just the beginning. He's also the only person who knows how to use the Springlock suits. Again, once they were decommissioned, the suits were hidden away. Regardless of whether you believe that the killer used a Golden Bonnie suit the whole time, or you think he used a Golden Freddy suit, either way, we know for a fact the killer was using one of the yellow Springlocked suits, and Phone Guy is the only character we know who had knowledge of A, where they were hidden, and B, how they were operated safely. Now, I know a lot of people have said that it couldn't have been Phone Guy because he knew better. He knew that they were dangerous and could kill him, so if he was indeed the purple guy, he wouldn't just hop into a spring trap suit like we see depicted at the ending of FNAF 3. But, there's one key detail that everyone has been overlooking and that Scott carefully included in this game. Listen. Hear it? There's rain. There are puddles on the ground. It's dripping from the ceiling. The killer had been using these springlock suits safely for years, but in his panic to escape the ghosts, he failed to notice the wetness of the building around him. The killer had never encountered this problem before because the building had always been in a decent state of repair, but now it's a wreck, torn apart by age. Rain is able to seep in, something he didn't realize when he was in such a hurry to run away from the ghosts. And if moist breath can lose in the locks, you can bet some rain would make those suckers ready to snap shut. And they do, killing our killer. I mean, all of that makes a pretty compelling argument, almost an open and shut case, if there wasn't one final major criticism to the Phone Guy theory since the release of FNAF 3. And it's a good one. The fact that Phone Guy seems to die during his Night 4 phone call from the first game. Uh, hey, listen. Uh, I may not be around to send you a message tomorrow. It's, it's been a bad night here for me. Um, I, I'm kind of glad that I recorded my messages for you. <clears throat> Uh, when I did. If Phone Guy was the killer, why would the robot still be active after his death and the ghosts disappear? It just wouldn't make sense unless you stop to consider the rest of FNAF 3's endings. The big twist in FNAF 3 is the inclusion of a good and bad ending. By completing the game normally, you get the bad ending, in which we see Purple Guy die in a flashback minigame, and the whole thing ends with five masks representing the five main animatronics with lights on 
on behind their eyes. The good ending, meanwhile, requires using some not-so-subtly hidden clues to unlock minigames, then basically ignoring those games, glitching them out, and giving hidden dead kids cake to make them happy, obviously referring to the victims of Purple Guy. Beat the game this time, and the ending is largely the same, but with one fewer animatronic mask and no lights on. The obvious difference here is that in the good ending, the souls of the dead children have been put at peace. When they disappear, they disappear for good. They don't go back to their animatronic bodies. But the bad ending? The lights on behind the eyes of all five masks mean that these guys are still active. Angry, restless spirits still haunting the robots to this day. Because here's the thing. The good ending doesn't exist until you, as the player of the third installment, give cake to those kids during FNAF 3's hidden minigames. What you play in FNAF 1, though, is the aftermath of the bad ending, when the animatronics have killed Phone Guy, but are still out for vengeance. Yeah, you made it through those first five nights at Freddy's. You overheard the death of the purple guy recorded live on the phone, but it wasn't enough. You got the bad ending. Even with the killer crippled in the back room in a spring lock suit, the lights are still on in these animatronics. They're still roaming the halls, attacking anyone wearing that much-hated security guard outfit. People like Mike Schmidt, an innocent guy just trying to do his job at a failing pizza restaurant. And as the final nail in the coffin, what Phone Guy says in his Night 4 recording perfectly foreshadows what we see in the games. Maybe sometime uh, you could check inside those suits uh, in the back room. I'm gonna try to hold out until someone checks. Maybe it won't be so bad. Yeah, I, I, I always wondered what was in all those empty heads back there. Think about what Purple Guy does. He hides in a back room, the safe room, hides in a suit, and despite getting sprung trapped, actually does hold out until someone checks. Holds out long enough for the phone dude to find the hidden safe room, recover the animatronic, and set him free in Fazbear Fright. Exactly what the phone guy said he'd do in his final moments. And as Springtrap, he comes back in FNAF 3, comes back like he always does. And with no real animatronics present at Fazbear's Fright, remember Springtrap is the only real one they've found, with all the rest scattered, probably located in dumps, which is why their bodies and faces are decaying. All that the spirits can do is appear as phantoms, hallucinations. Well, all except one the puppet, who we see in his physical form roaming the hallways of Fazbear Fright. So real, in fact, that we see his reflection, visible in the pools of water under his feet, meaning he is there and unburnt. There's only one way to truly end this. End the murderous purple guy, burning the place to the ground. The puppet gave robots life, gave spirits peace, and finally gave the murderer, the phone guy, his long-deserved death or at least tried to. And that is the end of the Five Nights at Freddy's story. No hat, no movie, no fourth installment. What? Oh, no! 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 Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, what happened? What's wrong? Look! Oh no. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you enjoyed these theories, show your appreciation by subscribing to the channel. Seriously, I spent more blood, sweat, and tears on these scripts than I have on the entire four years of this show. You know, hopefully you liked it, hopefully you're satisfied with the conclusions I reached, and hopefully you decide to subscribe as a result. Wouldn't mind it. Now then, welcome back to the Super Amazing End Card Tournament, where today I just have a simple question. Are you excited about a Five Nights at Freddy's movie? Click over here to say yes. Click over here to say no. No, and oh my gosh, it's purple guy. Watch out. He's gonna kill you.